What's up, everybody? It's Justin, live. Ask me anything. Number 31. Holy smackers. That's a long time. I've never said holy smackers in my life. I don't know where that came from. Hey, let's check and see if we're live, okay? We gotta do that, first and foremost. I'm gonna hit the refresh button. It says live on my phone, but I actually have my phone turned around so that I don't write backwards for you guys. So I have to check on the actual Facebook page because I can't see from my phone, if I'm live, give me a second. Loading, okay. It says live. Let's make sure I can see myself, make sure everything looks good. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Did you like my cool little graphic I made for the home one episode earlier? That was cool, right? All right, mute that, mute the computer. What's up? We got it, awesome, killer. Hi, everybody, welcome, weekly, live. Ask me anything, number 31. I'm a couple minutes late, because there's a lot of stuff to consider when you're doing this in your house. Like, gotta put my dog away, because he gets crazy and I usually turn the air conditioner off, which I did, and I've been waiting for the last five minutes and it won't actually turn off. So if you hear a fan in the background, which is not good for the podcast, mm, I don't know what to do, I had to get started. Didn't wanna wait for it, I'm not sure why I won't shut off, but little things you gotta think about, right? You gotta set this whole little rig up, crazy stuff. So what's up? How you guys doing? How's your week been? Since last time we chatted, which I believe the last one was Bad Science, last one was Bad Science, we did well, this is not keto. We've been having some really cool episodes lately. Um, I think I got a good little setup here where I can use most of the whiteboard. So that's pretty cool. What's up, everybody? If you guys haven't been here before, this is an AMA, which stands for Ask Me Anything. I take questions from the Clovis Academy, and I am Clovis and Clovis Kids, my private Facebook groups. Uh, Clovis Academy is free to join. Get in there. We got over 1,100 members. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions for months and months and months on tonight's topic, and I've been avoiding it like the plague, and I will explain to you why I was avoiding it. Uh, there's a reason behind all that. But there's over 1,100 people in there. I am Clovis, well over 100 people now. Those are the paid members. We have Clovis Kids, 60 plus families. Get in there, it's awesome. If you wanna ask me questions directly, if you wanna be a part of these AMAs before we get into them rather than just here on the live, then you can do that. Um, last week in I am Clovis, we gave away 200 bucks cash. We did it on the live AMA, you might have seen it. Um, anyway, so let's get started here. Um, light is extra bright tonight. Yeah, it is, hold on one second, let me see. I can change stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna put it like right there. I have two lights set up tonight, so this is the good thing about live too. Let me see. There we go, the AC shut off, perfect. And let's see if that looks a little bit better. Sorry guys, taking a couple minutes. I'll go a couple minutes over, don't worry, I always do. Um, that might look a little bit better. Does it? Yeah, looks pretty good. All right, I can change it if I need to. Things change, if you can't see me well enough, let me know, we'll get into it. Um, also, guys, I have such big news, such crazy exciting news, look. See that? I got married. Just kidding, I'd rather die. This is my new aura ring, and it's awesome, and it just came, and it's, look how big, look at that. It's literally like a wedding ring. This thing is perfect in every way. I'm so excited, I pre-ordered this in April, back in April, crazy. Been waiting for pre-order forever. I got the aura ring. Ha ha ha. Be jealous. Be very jealous. It's amazing. I feel like a superhero. I can't wait to like get in and mess with it. Didn't really have time because I just opened it up before the AMA. Wanted to show you guys. I'm super excited. This thing is nuts. Not a wedding ring. Okay. Uh, let's talk. Preface. Today, I'm talking all about hormones. Again, this is a subject that I have avoided like the plague for a few different reasons. Uh, and we'll get into all that. But basically, I'm going to give you like a crash course on how hormones work. Okay, and I'm gonna expose the dangers in mainstream endocrinology, which I see a lot of problems with. Um, we'll explore how hormones impact your health. I can talk about the scary hormone disruptors found in your home, in your everyday life, found in society. I will tell you what you can do to set yourself on a path to hormone balance, but I wanna be clear, okay? I'm um, trying to think of the best way to say this. Sorry, <laughs> this two screen thing, the comments get uh, distracting, I have to, not look at the comments <laughs> right now. Um, but I wanna be clear, what this episode is not, I am not a doctor, okay? I say this over and over and over. I am not a doctor, I am not an endocrinologist, not by any means. So this is not an episode in which I'm going to break down the endocrine system and all the different complexities within it. This is not a medical course, I'm not a medical doctor. None of this is medical advice. It actually kinda drives me crazy that I have to be the guy to teach you this stuff because it exposes just how screwed up the mainstream is that you guys have to resort to me to get accurate information. And uh, it's cool, it's awesome, you know, but um, 
I never really wanted to be that guy. I didn't really set out to do this. This all just kind of happened, right? And it just comes from, from my lack of understanding from decades past and the lack of information, the lack of good, accurate information that I was given from healthcare professionals when my health was suffering. That's how we got here, guys. I was just fed up, you know? I was fed up the same way you guys are fed up. But I wanna be clear, I'm not a doctor. I'm not gonna give you an endocrinology lesson. It's not gonna happen that way. Um, so this might not be the episode that you thought it was gonna be, but I think you're gonna like it even more. I spent a lot of time sitting down figuring out the best way to approach this episode to give you guys maximum benefit, okay? Um, I really almost didn't wanna do this because people's understanding of hormones is so muddied and it's because of mainstream medicine, the way that mainstream handles hormones, right? It's almost too big for me to unpack. So like to give you an example, I'm not gonna talk to you about your T3 level or I'm not gonna talk about your nature throid, thyroid medication that you have or is your statin lowering your testosterone? Hint, yes it is. But is your statin lowering your testosterone? I'm not gonna talk about that stuff, right? I'm going to outline hormones as a whole and where we are going wrong as a society when it comes to natural hormone balance because we're really, really going wrong here and it's ruining everything because hormones, if you've spent any amount of time listening to Clovis, you know that hormones run the show. They run everything. Probably the single most important aspect of health, okay? So, sorry I got allergies today. Then we'll talk about practical steps to get you back on track. So we do this every week just in case people don't know. If you don't know me, my name is Justin Nault. I am the founder of Clovis. I am the CEO of Clovis. I invented the perfect paleo powder in my kitchen, in this kitchen. Um, we have seven powders now. We have fat loss, digest and rest, pre-workout, post-workout, multiple different flavors, all found at clovis.store. I am a certified nutritional therapist. I am a certified specialist in sports nutrition. I am officially a certified specialist in fitness nutrition. Credentials, credentials, credentials. <laughs> Um, anyway, that's me. I transform people's lives. I help people lose 100 pounds, 150 pounds, 70 pounds, 60 pounds, 40 pounds, 20 pounds, anything in between. I help people put on muscle. I help people do whatever they want to do. I am basically the transformation guy. That's what I do. I help people get transformations, whatever they want their transformation to be. I help them get it. That is my job. I can transform your health. I promise you. Um, so let's jump in and talk about one way which we can do that. And that is through hormone balance. We're going to talk about it naturally. Okay. So first things first, we are going to talk about endocrinology. I want to start there. Let me do a quick time check real quick. 812. Okay. Pretty good. Good time. Like this. We have, we have plenty of time to get through this stuff in, in a meaningful way. So if we talk about endocrinology, let's get started. <laughs> this is a big one to unpack. I'm like, holy shit. Okay. Here we go. Uh, endocrinology. The branch of physiology and medicine concerned with endocrine glands and hormones. Now, endocrine, gland, endocrine glands are simply organs that secrete hormones. And you got a whole bunch of them throughout your endocrine system. The ob obvious ones responsible for your sex hormones being the ovaries and testes. Um, your pancreas is responsible for secreting insulin as part of the digestive process and the fat storage process. We've talked a million times about insulin. Uh, you may be familiar with the adrenal glands, which are responsible for your stress hormones like cortisol, adrenaline, that type thing. You're probably also familiar, I know a lot of you are because of the medications you're on, you're familiar with the thyroid, um, which is just another endocrine gland, okay? Um, countless women who find Clovis tell me that they have adrenal fatigue. And I'm always gonna use rabbit ears for adrenal fatigue. You'll find out why when I rant about it later in this episode. And have been on some sort of thyroid medication for years, literally years. You guys come to me on thyroid medication after years and years and years. Why does this happen? Because of the mainstream approach to endocrinology. And we're gonna talk about that. The mainstream approach to endocrinology is something called the conventional replacement model of endocrinology. Conventional replacement meaning something's missing, let's replace it. And the conventional model meaning what the mainstream does, okay? This is the conventional replacement model of endocrinology. So, the mainstream will measure your hormone levels, usually with very surface level results. It's the same way that they'll do a total cholesterol test and try to put you on a statin based on that with no particle numbers. It's insane, don't let them do it, right? They do the same thing with like thyroid levels. There's really, really inadequate testing that are covered by insurance companies, it's really terrible. So if they find low levels, they will supplement those specific hormones using hormone replacement therapy. People call it HRT, so hormone replacement therapy. That's the basic of how they do it, the conventional replacement model, okay? Basic summary, nice and simple. Literally just replacing what is low. I'm gonna just 
touch this dimmer a little bit more. So the problem with the conventional replacement model is it doesn't really fix the problem. It doesn't fix the underlying issue, okay, that's causing the hormonal imbalance to begin with. It's trying to set the balance straight, but it's doing so, it's like putting a Band-Aid on a stab wound, right? So increasing one hormone can cause a decrease in another hormone and vice versa. You can't just pick out, pick out specific hormones and treat them by themselves. This will lead to issues long-term if not handled correctly. And what I mean by that is if a level of something is in the toilet, like your testosterone levels in the toilet, right? HRT can be very beneficial and help the patient feel fantastic. For example, like if you're a 45 year old man and you have really, really low T and the doctor's like, hey, you need to decrease stress and you need to exercise more and you need to make the right food decisions and blah, blah, blah. If he tries to give you lifestyle changes and your testosterone's in the toilet, testosterone plays a big factor in motivation. Um, so it's really hard to get dudes excited about anything when they have really, really low T. So it may help to use HRT in that scenario, help give the guy the push, the motivation he needs to feel better in the short term while you work on the lifestyle choices that are going to eventually lead to proper hormone production in the future, okay? So I'm a big fan of HRT when used responsibly and alongside the functional medicine approach to improving natural hormone production. So um, in men, for example, if you just do constant HRT, like if you're just doing a, a TRT, like testosterone replacement therapy, if you're just pumping dudes full of testosterone, just getting that level as high as you can, they feel amazing, right? That's gonna lead to really, really long-term problems that are sometime ir sometimes irreversible. So it can lead to low natural testosterone production, it can lead to low sperm count, and even worse, low sperm quality, to where the dude gets the point, to the point where he's completely infertile, like literally shooting blanks, man. Like it's no joke. Um, so hormone testosterone, testosterone replacement therapy is not the end-all be-all. It's not the only thing you should do. You have to get natural uh, testosterone production back to where it needs to be to do this in a healthy way because you don't want these symptoms that can literally be irreversible. And the long-term picture is just as grim for women, not just for men, right? You have no idea how many women come to me and they're on, on hormone replacement therapy in some way, shape, or form, whether it's thyroid or estrogen or progesterone or whatever it may be that they're on, right? And they tell me that the doctor said, and I quote, you will take this for the rest of your life. Particularly with thyroid medication. I get this all the time. They're like, yeah, I take my thyroid medication and my doctor said I'll take it for the rest of my life. What are you talking about? Like, what? What are you talking about? Guys, calm down about the light. Sorry. We're not writing on the board yet. Don't worry about it. Um, so they literally tell them like, you're going to take this for the rest of your life. What? Are you kidding me? That's insane. Right? So there are, they're not addressing the underlying issue whatsoever with the hormone production. They're treating a symptom, not treating a cause like most of mainstream medicine. Okay. Now there are countless upstream and downstream effects that are happening throughout the body that impact hormonal balance. It's a really big deal. So let's talk briefly about cofactors. Okay. Cofactors and enzymes cofactors, coenzymes, a lot of this verbiage that you're gonna hear is like interchangeable. It's like adrenaline and noradrenaline or noradrenaline and norepinephrine and coenzymes and cofactors and all these tricky things, right? I know fancy words, hooray. So cofactors and coenzymes are basically helper molecules. That's how they should be thought of in the body. So they're derived from electrolytes, vitamins, and essential nutrients, which we talk about all the time, and their job is to help facilitate the action of enzymes and proteins in the cell. Hold on a sec. Let me see if I can get this to focus. That might be better. So, okay, so their job is to help facilitate the action of enzymes and proteins in the cell. So micronutrient deficiency disrupts cofactor activity, which disrupts enzyme activity, which disrupts hormone balance. Again, this upstream to downstream effects. I'm going to talk about that in a second too. So enzymes are proteins in the cells that are required to receive the hormone, the signal from the hormone. This is called a hormone receptor, receiving the hormone, okay? Micronutrient deficiency severely impacts these functions. It's a big, big deal. So chemical interventions can wreak havoc on the system as well. For example, if let's say you supplement with birth control, right? This can deplete levels of zinc, it can deplete levels of magnesium, it can deplete levels of vitamin B6, and these vitamins and nutrients are cofactors for other coenzymes. 
So the birth control is decreasing these cofactors for other enzymes, which diminishes their activity, which can lead to hormonal imbalance. So birth control seems like a great treatment, but is having downstream effects. These are called undesirable downstream effects. So let's talk about the upstream downstream thing, okay? So again, I'm gonna try to unpack this real quick. Endocrinology is all about upstream and downstream effects. Think of this as steps in the supply chain, right? So Clovis, my job is to manufacture products and get them from my warehouse to your doorstep, right? Think of that as the supply chain. So everything in between manufacturing to your door so you can have your delicious paleo powder, there's a supply chain in between those two steps, okay? Now the entire supply chain is creating hormones, products, and delivering them to the cells, consumer, okay? Clovis to consumer, hormones to cells, right? So hormone receptor, the receptors for that reason are considered downstream. They're activated downstream of hormone synthesis. So upstream, hormone is created. Hormone is sent, transferred from one place to another. Downstream effect, hormone receptor receives that hormone. See? Upstream, downstream, get it? Upstream, downstream, everything in between, okay? Countless factors are at play with upstream and downstream effects all through all the cells in the human body throughout the entire supply chain, and it is endlessly complex. Literally endlessly complex. So I'm gonna to try to break this down, and I haven't decided how to draw this yet, so we're gonna do this off the top of my head. <laughs> I'm gonna to try to break this down in modern day terminology, okay? So let's think about your phone. Now, when I draw this, I'm gonna assume that you all have iPhones because I really wanna be your friend, and if you text me and I get a green bubble from you, it's really hard to be your friend, so we're just gonna say that we're transferring data between our iPhones, okay? Awesome, so in this scenario, you have my phone, okay? My phone. And you have your phone. So, in this scenario, my phone is an endocrine gland, okay? So this is an endocrine gland. Endocrine gland. I'm doing this off the top of my head, I hope this works. So, this is an endocrine gland. In this scenario, your phone is a hormone receptor, okay? This is a hormone receptor. Endocrine gland, hormone receptor. When I send you a text, that is me creating a hormone and sending it to a specific location, okay? My text to you is the hormone. That data in that text is the hormone. So your phone becomes the hormone receptor. Now, if all goes according to plan, you receive the text, bling, da da da, right? You receive the text, you can read it, no problem, you receive the information, it's sending perfectly, that's basically how hormones work. The text is created, the text is sent, the data, okay? Hormone created, hormone delivered, hormone receptor gets the signal, okay? That's how it works. Text is the hormone, phone receiving the text is the hormone receptor of the cell. Now, let's think about airplane mode or no cell service, right? So if, you, if your phone's in airplane mode or you have no cell phone service, this is considered a disruptor. This is a hormone disruptor, okay? It's, it's disrupting the signal from the hormone. So if your phone is in airplane mode and I send you the same text, you won't receive it at all, right? The same thing happens in the body when hormone receptors are disrupted by these endocrine disruptors, right? These things that cause hormonal imbalances. That's, they're called endocrine disruptors. They're disrupting the receptors, the hormone receptors. So if your phone is off, this is another scenario. If your phone is off or you have really bad service and I try to send you a text, right? Now, when you get, have you ever been in a situation where you have very low service, your friend's trying to text you, you're in a movie theater or something, then you come out and bing, 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 you get the same text message multiple times, right? So all of a sudden it'll go ding, 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 and you get the same text message multiple times. One, it'll say iMessage, one, it'll say delivered as text message, blah, blah, blah. It's trying to send you that signal, but it's being disrupted by something. So it keeps sending it in hopes of you receiving it. When you eventually get back in the service area, you may receive too many of the same text message, too many of the same hormone, okay? So in this scenario, when you think of the endocrine glands and your hormone receptors, this can happen multiple ways. You can not receive the hormone at all, you can receive very little of the hormone signal, or you can receive way, way, way too much, okay? 
So this is kind of a little breakdown I came up with is hormone, hormone disruption works both ways. You can get too much, you can get too little, you can get none at all, okay? So when we're talking about hormone imbalance, it is important to treat the endocrine system as a whole. I don't want you to look at this as testosterone or estrogen or T3 in your thyroid or whatever. I want you to think of this as the human body as a whole, okay? Whole body. We're going to treat hormonal imbalance via the entire body. That is the functional medicine approach to endocrinology. And I'm gonna to explain to you how they handle it. It's much different from the conventional replacement model, even though it may have aspects of it, okay? This is why I choose to see a functional medicine doctor. So they may use hormone replacement therapy, and I've actually done this. I almost killed myself years ago, uh, training powerlifting, CrossFit, Jiu Jitsu at the same time, and playing music and all these things, right? Crazy. So uh, my testosterone was like in the, the low 200s. It was horrible. Uh, saw a functional medicine doctor, helped get me on track, right? But we'll talk more about stress later. Almost killed myself via stress. But while they're doing HRT, hormone replacement therapy, the difference is the functional medicine practitioners are also gonna help you discover the underlying issues causing the imbalance to begin with. So while they're treating the symptoms, they're investigating the root cause. This is far superior then choosing one or two hormones, drastically increasing them synthetically, and leading to a host of other complications and undesirable downstream effects. Okay, I'm trying to do that part a little bit slowly and I'm gonna take your comments here in a second just to make sure. So what I wanna talk about is the major mechanisms contributing to hormonal imbalance in the body that have nothing to do with this, hey, your T3 is low, or hey, you have adrenal fatigue, or hey, your testosterone is low, here's an injection, or here's this. We're gonna talk about the lifestyle factors that play a huge role in this, okay? There's your little text message thing, the body as a whole. So number one I wanna talk about is, and we've talked about this a million times, is the gut, your gut microbiome. The balance and ratio of your gut flora plays a huge role in this. Like for example, you can literally have gut flora that predispose you to having too much or not enough estrogen. Like one strain of bacteria can do that. It's insane, right? So the gut flora is hugely important. The next thing I wanna talk about is called HPA. This is the HPA axis and cortisol. So I'm gonna to explain to you what the HPA axis is and something called cortisol dysregulation because cortisol is a stress hormone and it's wildly important. Literally plays a role in how your body metabolizes fat, protein, and carbohydrates. It's a huge, huge deal, okay? So HPA dysfunction and cortisol dysregulation. This is the HPA axis. I'm gonna explain that to you in a second. But first, we have to talk about adrenal fatigue. Again, bunny ears, adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue is a lazy diagnosis. It drives me crazy, literally drives me crazy, okay? What they're actually talking about is an overarching issue with the HPA access. That's what they're talking about, but that's more complicated and too difficult for them to wrap their heads around, okay? So this is why it drives me up a freaking wall when somebody comes to me and they're like, Justin, you don't understand, I've tried everything, I can't lose weight, I have adrenal fatigue. That's because their doctor has given them an out. Their doctor didn't have a good answer. Their doctor didn't have the lifestyle answers that they needed to give the patient. So they've literally given them an out. It's like, oh, sorry, you're, this one gland is malfunctioning. Your weight loss goals are down the drain. Sorry. It literally like gives them an out. They're just like, oh, okay, I, I have adrenal fatigue. Doesn't work properly. Sorry. But they don't give them any explanation as to how this happened. How did adrenal fatigue happen? Okay. Your adrenals don't magically stop producing. This doesn't just happen overnight, the next day you wake up, you have weak adrenals, right? That doesn't happen. What happens is they overproduce for long periods of time due to chronic stress, due to lack of sleep, due to poor diet, due to chemicals in your environment, due to overtraining, over physical training, which tons of people do, women with CrossFit, cortisol is a huge, huge issue, okay? There are tons of lifestyle factors such as, again, severe overtraining, running three businesses at the same time, working downtown Broadway, playing gigs till three o'clock in the morning, four nights a week, while doing a startup like Clovis. All these things that I was doing when I literally killed myself with powerlifting and CrossFit and had to do hormone replacement therapy, right? That's what happens. My body shut down, completely shut down. Eventually, they burn out, hence adrenal fatigue. It's not adrenals magically stop working overnight, it's adrenal fatigue. That's the whole point of it, but nobody explains that to you. 
Okay, so that's what's happening. Lifestyle factors are causing this. It's not, hey, I'm really tired, my weak adrenal is causing my lifestyle issue. Your lifestyle issue is causing the weak adrenal. See what I'm saying? Okay, so I digress. This lazy diagnosis is talking about the HPA axis. The HPA, HPA axis is the hypothalamus pituitary axis, okay? The hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. Hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. HPA axis. Your hypothalamus and the pituitary are responsible for regulating every single hormone in the entire body. I repeat that. Your hypothalamus and the pituitary are responsible for regulating every single hormone in the body. So if you're having hormonal imbalance, there is an issue with HPA access, right? Now, if your adrenals are stressed, you're having issues with cortisol. Low cortisol and high cortisol can both cause problems. Now, HPA dysfunction and cortisol dysregulation can both lead to leaky gut, okay? Both of these things can lead to leaky gut, and as we know, a weak gut, leaky gut, or gut imbalance can lead to hormonal imbalance. Now, another thing I wanna talk about is insulin. Insulin resistance, leptin resistance, uh, which is one of your hunger hormones. Leptin tells you you're full, ghrelin tells you you're hungry, right? We've talked about that, stored in your fat cells. So leptin resistance, insulin resistance, blood sugar issues, these all lead to very serious problems as well. So insulin is a really big deal because insulin resistance can also lead to, insulin resistance can lead to high cortisol levels. High cortisol levels can lead to leaky gut. Leaky gut can lead to hormonal imbalances, right? This is a chain. There's a reason why I'm doing it this way because these are all the lifestyle, lifestyle issues that are leading to hormonal imbalance, these metabolic functions that are causing you problems, okay? So the insulin resistance is a big deal. Now, another thing that women don't realize is insulin surges are responsible for other hormones entirely. Like severe insulin surges constantly can actually lead to way higher than normal testosterone levels in females. Now, a lot of you in the Clovis Academy, pay attention, right? When you first get to me, carb-rich diets, starvation diets, all these things, you don't know what you're doing nutritionally. Insulin surges, constant insulin surges, can lead to chronically elevated testosterone in women. Chronically elevated testosterone in women can lead to PCOS, okay? I repeat that. Chronically elevated testosterone can lead to PCOS. So there's a lot of confusion around PCOS. Is there a cause? Is there this? Is there that? And that can go on for days and days. We're not gonna talk about PCOS. Just telling you one of the things that can happen. Insulin surges equals high testosterone in women equals PCOS, okay? Crazy. One more thing I wanna talk about. Well, there's two more things technically, but fats. When it comes to hormone balance, essential fatty acids are, you guessed it, essential, required. They are required for human survival. They are required for every single function and every single cell in the human body, specifically your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, okay? Omega-6, if you have, now most people when they come to me in standard American diet, they have like a 26 to one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. In Clovis, we're probably closer to a one-to-one -one or even a two-to-one on omega-3s. I supplement omega-3s, I eat plenty of wild fish, all these things, right? So I don't have to worry about that. But if you have too much omega-6 coming from like vegetable oils, industrial seed oils, anything fried, all these things, all that omega-6, that inflammatory omega-6, literally disrupts hormone receptors, like we just talked about with the iPhones, right? So if you have crazy omega-6 levels, crazy inflammation, crazy trans fats, damaged fats, fried fats, oils, disrupting that cellular membrane, disrupting those hormone receptors, disrupting your hormone balance, okay? Crazy. Now the other thing is, in terms of essential fatty acids, cholesterol. All of your sex hormones are derived from cholesterol. I wanna be very clear about that. I've said this before in multiple AMAs. All of your sex hormones are derived from cholesterol, which means cholesterol is a required precursor for producing sex hormones. If you are low in specific sex hormones, you probably wanna up your cholesterol. Guys can actually do this as a hack. If you have a date or something next night, you can pump yourself full of whole eggs and, and whatever else, a 12 ounce ribeye steak or whatever you need to do, get that cholesterol level up and it will actually impact your testosterone level. If you have a cholesterol test in the morning, you wanna fast, you don't wanna eat cholesterol, it'll give you a false reading because it'll raise your testosterone that quickly, 
okay? Cholesterol is required for all of your sex hormones. That's really important because cholesterol is still demonized today in the mainstream. They tell you to limit your saturated fat intake, limit this, limit that, right? It's cholesterol, you need it. You need it for your hormone balance. So fats, very, very important. Insulin important. The HPA axis, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, cortisol dysregulation, gut health. These are all the things that are leading to your hormonal imbalance, all right? We're not talking about what pills you should take. We haven't talked about any pills yet, have we, right? This is how I wanted this episode to go. The last thing I wanna talk about, where we're going to jump into um, one more thing after this. The first thing I wanna talk about on this list that we still have here is something called liver detoxification. So for you to get proper hormone balance, the liver plays a critical role here. Liver detoxification, detox oh my God. Liver detoxification is crucial for proper hormone function. Now, we already talked about cofactors, right? The cofactors that are required for certain enzymes to serve their function as hormone receptors. You need these cofactors. So all of these cofactors that are involved in the different levels of liver detoxification require essential micronutrients. These nutrients are cofactors for liver detoxification, which means nutrient deficiencies ruin liver detoxification. So micronutrient deficiencies kill liver detoxification processes, kill hormonal functions. So if we go back to the iPhone example, a micronutrient deficiency would be like not having any cell phone service or a dead battery when I'm trying to send you a text message. You're not going to receive those text messages, okay? So micronutrients are very, very important. So that's gonna bring us to nutrient deficiency, which means that we are going to talk next. I'm gonna check a couple comments and we're gonna talk specifically about nutrient deficiency and the big fat elephant in the room. So let's see here. No, I'm not explaining PCOS. It's too touchy. No. People have very, very strong opinions on it. And I'm not a doctor, so you're probably not going to like my opinion. My opinion is going to be different than your doctor's, for sure. Uh, what else we got here? Fatty liver. Yeah, I mean, fatty liver disease. Think about it. If I just told you that liver detoxification plays a giant role in hormonal imbalance, how important do you think it is that your liver is functioning. Now, fatty liver disease, of course, is going to lead to obesity, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, all of these things, which are going to completely disrupt, disrupt your hormones. So that's a no-brainer. No um, fatty liver. 13 peeps watching. Yeah! PCOS. I'm telling you, we're going to do a different... Trust me, I have way too much to get to to get into PCOS. That's huge to unpack. Done with doctors! Yes. My cholesterol, my cortisol is probably destroyed. Stomach is our second brain. If anyone knows of a self-testosterone test, hmm, good question. I mean, you can use a service like SpectraCell, um, S-P-E-C-T-R-A, okay? So SpectraCell is a great place to go to self-test. There are plenty of places where you can self-test. Uh, SpectraCell has a full female hormone panel. They have a full male hormone panel. You can test testosterone, you can test micronutrients, all these things, but you're gonna have to pay out of pocket. So you're gonna be willing to pay like 150 bucks to 300 bucks, depending on what you're talking about. I think it's just spectracell.com too. Okay, we're back up to hellos. Uh, all right, let's keep going because this is gonna get crazy here. Yeah, cortisol and stress, I have a whole episode on that and we're gonna talk about that as well. Okay, so the first, the, the next thing I wanna talk about is what I'm calling the elephant in the room, okay? This is really, really important. She tries to talk to me while I'm talking. That Amazon device. I need to shut her off. See, there's too many things to think about when I'm doing it in my own house. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. That is starvation, okay? We need to talk about starvation. Before you found me, all of you, literally all of you, men and women, both, before you found me, you were starving yourselves because every single one of you who has come to me has come to me with the interest of leaning out, reducing body fat, increasing muscle mass, just getting overall more tone, which means you were not happy with the results you were getting, and all of you were falling into the mainstream advice of eat fewer calories, okay? So what happened is you were all starving yourselves. Now for men, less than 1,500 calories per day is considered a starvation diet. 
I literally have had men come to me and I have them start tracking. They're like, I don't need to track, bro. I don't need to track. I'm not like that. I'm not a woman trying to lose weight. I don't need to track. And I'm like, you need to track immediately or I'm not going to work with you. And then they track and they're eating 900 calories, a thousand calories. These are 220 pound men, right? Crazy, complete and utter starvation. Women, it's less than 1200. 1200 calories considered a starvation diet. Now again, these are general numbers. If you come to me and you're four foot nine and you weigh 112 pounds or 90 pounds, I literally am working with somebody right now is 96 pounds, this may be a little bit different, okay? Generally speaking, this is the threshold for a starvation diet, which means that less than this number of calories you're gonna deal with micronutrient deficiencies. Less than 1500 for men, you're gonna be dealing with micronutrient deficiencies, okay? So let's say men and women. So you guys come to me on these crazy starvation diets. Now, caloric deprivation is one of the most common overall factors for HPA dysfunction, okay? The hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis that we talked about, that HPA. Caloric deprivation is one of the number one reasons why this system starts to malfunction because you now are dealing with a micronutrient deficiency. You can't create the cofactors. You can't activate the enzymes. The hormone receptors are disrupted. You guys getting this little thing here? We're gonna repeat this over and over because I wanna make sure that you're getting it, right? So many of you ate well below starvation diets for decades before you got to me. Literally, for decades before you got to me, you were on a starvation diet. So it's very, very hard for me to not scream at my computer when I see a post that's like, I've been on Clovis for two weeks and my period's weird. Is this safe? I'm like, huh? What? <laughs> We got, like you never researched the 800 calorie a day diet that you were on for 15 years before you got to me. Now it's like, is Clovis safe because you had a period, which by the way, you're supposed to do. That's supposed to happen in your body. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I'm just like, wait a minute, what, what? This is crazy. So it, it's, it's like the, um, I don't know what episode it was. I think it was uh, uh, Clovis is not keto. Now this is all in fun, I promise you. But it's like the Clovis is not keto episode where I'm like, you guys are blaming me for it's like a like a crazy girlfriend who's mean to her current boyfriend because the ex boyfriend cheated on her. Like, well, you're an asshole because all men are assholes and he cheated. Nah, we're, I'm mad at you. You're not. It, it's crazy, right? So you're coming to me and you want this thing untwisted and unraveled in a heartbeat. That's really, really, really difficult. It's a really, really difficult place for me to be in because the unfortunate truth is that all of this, this starvation diet, the hormone receptors, the micronutrients, the cofactors for all these enzymes that you need to activate, this can take a very long time to undo. A very, very long time to undo. And this is part of the reason why different results happen at different times for different people, okay? So it's very, very tricky and I don't exactly know how to handle it because I can get very quick results in some people. So it's all about, in this, this fitness space, right? It's all about what, did, what were the results you got in 10 days? What were the results you got in 14 days, 30 days, right? This is why I constantly say, do not think of Clovis as a 30 day reset. Do not think of Clovis as another fad diet. If you go into it with that, you're gonna fail. If you don't let this last long enough to really untangle some of the deep seated health issues that you have, that's what we're talking about. I'm talking about lifestyle design to change your life for the future. Because there are actual clinical studies, I've told you guys this. The reason why counting calories doesn't work is it lowers your base metabolic rate, right? Your BMR, your BMR drops. The body is not stupid. Energy is not created nor destroyed, right? So if your body has a 2000 calorie a day output and you're giving it 2000 calories a day and you magically say, well now I'm only gonna give you 1500 calories a day. Your body is gonna go, okay dummy, well I'm only gonna burn 1500 a day, let me adjust. Your new BMR is now 1500. The body adjusts, it's smarter than you. Okay, you can't outsmart it with this calories in, calories out system. But the problem is there's clinical research showing that that drop in BMR can take over a year to undo. Can take over a year to undo. So if we just start packing on food, your hormone system is already disrupted because of the caloric intake. So the hormones are disrupted. Now we go back to a, a larger food quantity, right? It's not the calories playing the role, it's the hormone disruption. 
So you're like, why can't I keep the weight off? All these crazy things because you're literally impacting your hormones up and down with this crazy caloric restriction thing. If you give your body what it needs for the hormones to, to function properly and give it the proper macros to release the correct amount of insulin and blood sugar and all these things that we talk about here at Clovis, then you have sustainable lifelong health. But when you first get to me, there's an awful lot to undo. A real, real, real serious problem to undo. Okay, with this hormonal imbalance. And the other thing we're gonna get into, we're gonna talk about medication. Because a lot of you come to me on medication, which makes my job even harder, okay? So this lack, constant lack of calories leads to chronic micronutrient deficiency, less cofactors, less enzyme activity, which means hormonal imbalance. So since we're talking about calories, I wanna show you an example of how this works. I'm gonna talk to you about something really scary when it comes to hormones, okay? So I'm gonna talk briefly about something called estrogenics, okay? Estrogenics. Now, I touched on this without calling it estrogenics in like everything in your house is killing you. Um, anytime I've talked about hormones or products, like deadly products, all these things, right? And different AMAs. This is too big for me to do here. It's like, it's like getting into uh, um, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, whatever, PCOS. It's like getting into that or getting into estrogenics. Like this stuff is all really, really tricky, really, really complicated. And this one, I might give its own episode because I've been really diving into this and it's amazing. It's really, really, everyone should know this information, but it might need its own episode. So let's touch on it real quick, okay? So an estrogenic is simply something that binds or sticks to estrogen receptors in the body. Basically, estrogen mimicking compounds in the body, okay? Estrogenic. Now, estrogenics are obesogenic, which means they promote obesity in the body, okay? Estrogenics are used in feedlot cattle via injection to fatten up cattle while feeding them the same exact number of calories. So let me be clear about that. Farmers will save money by injecting their cattle with estrogenics, which will cause them to magically plump up and gain fat at an alarming rate with the same number of calories. This allows the farmer to save money on feed and get just as big of animals simply by disrupting their estrogen hormones, their estrogen receptors. Estrogen receptors are found basically everywhere in the body. Uh, that's another quick thing. So like leptin, leptin tells you you're full, right? Leptin can flow through your bloodstream, it can go through any organ in your body and it won't tell anybody anything because those organs don't have leptin receptors. If an organ doesn't have a receptor, if a cell doesn't have a receptor for a particular hormone, it just ignores it. It doesn't even know it's there. It doesn't receive the signal, right? But your brain has a bunch of leptin signals. So your brain receives the leptin signal and tells your belly that you're full, tells you to stop eating. Those receptors are in your brain. Estrogen receptors are found in literally every organ in the body, almost every single cell in the entire human body. So when you start disrupting estrogen, you're talking about crazy problems. I am way off the wagon here. None of this is in my notes. Let me refine my place, but estrogen is a big deal. These estrogenics are disrupting freaking everything, okay? So you can put these estrogen mimicking hormones in animals, same number of calories, get big, fat, giant animals with the same number of calories. This completely debunks calories in, calories out in animals, and in humans, it's exactly the same, okay? Sure, we have different stomachs, whatever, but these estrogenics are obesogenic in human beings as well. Side note. This is another reason why you should really try to suck it up, figure out a way to make it happen, and switch your family to grass-fed beef. You really should. I've said this a lot. I don't want to make people feel guilty. I don't want to berate you or anything like that. Like, I get it. it again, the, the, the feedlot stuff is way better than feeding your kid Cheerios and Doritos. Way better. Way better, way better, way better. But these estrogenics, they are found in the cells of these animals. 100%. You can test the meat and find the estrogenics, period. Okay? They're stored in fat cells. So, if... If increasing one specific hormone means that the same number of calories gets you fat, what does that say about the calories in, calories out myth? We have gotta stop at this calorie stuff. If you still think that eating less calories is gonna make you lose weight, I don't know what to do for you at this, time, at this point. I don't know why you're still watching Clovis videos. Honestly, I really don't. These estrogenics are found everywhere. Now again, I've touched on this in different AMAs, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly through this. Estrogenics are found in plants, such as soy. Soy is the biggest offender because it has something called phytoestrogens, particular phytoestrogens called isoflavones that the human gut cannot process, right? So soy is like through the roof. Like other beans have it too, like, like black beans has phytoestrogens in it. You would need to eat 
10,000 cups of black beans to get the phytoestrogens in one cup of soybeans. That's how serious this phytoestrogen problem is. It's why I've been screaming about soy since like AMA number three. I taught you about isoflavones in AMA number three, I think, number three and number four, we talked about isoflavones. Um, these estrogenics are found in mold, they're found in herbicides and pesticides, they're found in soap products, they're found in sunscreen, they're found in cosmetics, food colorings, fragrances, plastics, and of course, the most blatant estrogenic, and the number one reason why I'm bringing up estrogenics in this, because 85% of the Clovis Academy is women, birth control, which contains a specific estrogenic known as EE2. EE2, okay? This is basically the main ingredient in every single chemical birth control that you all take, that, that everyone around the planet takes, okay? So I've gone over the vast majority of these in previous AMAs. Check out the Everything in Your House is Killing You AMA, very, very important. Some of these chemicals, such as APEs, which are called alkyl phenols, they don't have to be listed on product labels. It's insane. It's absolutely crazy, right? There's no legal ramification for not listing these things. And these products just crush your hormones completely, period. If you think this all sounds scary, I promise you, it's much, much, much worse than you think. How bad? These products are leaking into every single aspect of our environment. They're in our drinking water, they're in the soil, they're on the foods that we eat, they're in the recycled products that we use, they're in your Starbucks cup that they serve your coffee in. It's been found in the brain and liver cells of, of animals all around the globe, from dolphins to seals to frogs to salmon to polar bears, literally. These estrogenics are found in their brains and liver cells. It's in feedlot cattle, it's in chicken, it's insane. And the fertility levels of almost every single species on the planet has gone down since the rise of these estrogenics are found in all of these consumer goods that we have. All these consumer goods we have, the, the water supply, all these things, it's very, very scary. If you're not scared of estrogenics, you totally should be, and I'm gonna recommend a book that you should read. But uh, some other scary estrogenics, such as one called 4-MBC. 4-MBC is found in almost all sunscreens. You can think of these as like the Benz, anything B-E-N-Z ingredients, like a benzyl or whatever, benzyl, phenol, all these things that are found in sunscreens. Terrible. They can cause symptoms in the body that mimic hypothyroidism. See what I'm saying here? There are so many disruptors that we're not aware of. It's not, your thyroid isn't just magically malfunctioning. There are reasons for this hormonal stuff and we need to figure it out, not just give you a T3 pill or a nature throid pill, right? The estrogenic found in soaps, food colorings, and sunscreen are especially problematic for children. They're tied directly to ADD and ADHD. This is all insanely important because a hormonal imbalance can simply be a matter of changing the products in your house, for real. So go back, get, I have an approved products ebook, clovis.store, buy the approved products ebook. I've done the legwork for you. Those are safe products, right? It's 17 bucks, change your whole household, done, right? But the number one reason why I bring up estrogenics is because of birth control. So we're going to talk about birth control here in a second. Let me see if I have some uh, comments and I'm running out of time, which always happens, it's crazy. No more birth control. Yes, I'll write down the book. We're gonna go through, a, uh, once we go through Q&A and exactly what to do, I'll write down the book, the author, all that stuff. Contact me if you need grass-fed meats. Yeah, no, same here. Um, we have a Clovis Nutrition Butcher Box page. Nice and easy. I understand it's expensive. I understand it's expensive. But what is the alternative, right? Think about it. Scrape, nickel, and dime wherever you need to. I can get you a huge discount on Butcher Box. I can get you free stuff thrown into your first box. Let me know. Butcher Box is fantastic. Just shoot me a message. Um, and we eat them. So does that include antibiotics and steroids? Yes, absolutely. Anything that can get stored in the human cells of humans is stored in, in I mean, the fat cells of humans is stored in the fat cells of animals. These are fat soluble items. We've talked about fat soluble items like A, D, K, and E. These things build up in your system because they, they're fat soluble. All of these toxins and hormones and antibiotics are fat soluble as well. They're stored in the fat cells. Even, I'll talk about this in a minute, but even THC. THC stores in your fat cells. You burn enough fat cells, you can get high. Not even kidding, if you were once upon a time a weed smoker. It's insane. Six plus months, trust me, you can stay with it. Yes, 100%. Use my fitness pal. I'm at 10, 14 days, I'm at 10, 14 days straight. Bad day, six days. Uh, I don't know what that means. 1,014 calories? You're a full grown man, dude. That's not good, you're starving. Spectracell, yes, super affordable, quick, absolutely. Love it. Okay, we're back up to stress and all that. So we'll talk about, um, Everything uh, stress-related, you can go watch that AMA where I literally have a full AMA on stress. Uh, EWG and Think Dirty apps, yes, they're fantastic. 
absolutely great place to start. Be careful, again, because APEs don't have to be listed. The alkalphenols don't have to be listed. Um, for example, like I was discussing this with Jessica earlier, like lavender products can cause a tremendous amount of problems. Like lavender soaps can cause real serious problems and they just have lavender in them. It's not that they have an APE or anything like this. It's the lavender itself. It's really crazy, but that's there. These are the plant compounds, these phytoestrogens that are found in certain things, right? You got to get really careful. This stuff is really, really tricky. So I'll recommend the book, and you guys can go through that. And um, I assure you that you can go through, and the approved products list on Clovis is going to be your best friend there, like 100%. So let's get into birth control, okay? So most of you, when you come to me, this is what happens, right? Most of you come to me with the hormonal imbalance. Many of you are being treated for that hormone imbalance. The treatment usually involves birth control. Many of you are being treated for thyroid issues, which we've talked about, so you're on thyroid medication. Many of you have been told that you have adrenal fatigue and you tell me that you have adrenal fatigue. And this is how bad it is. Over 100 million women worldwide are on chemical birth control. 100 million women. This is, that number equals 60% of all married women on the planet, on planet Earth. 60% of all married women on planet Earth are on chemical birth control. 100 million women worldwide are on chemical birth control. And these all have these things called EE2, this estrogenic called EE2. So I'm gonna walk you through something because I know your doctor didn't do this, okay? All these medical, medical uh, contraceptives that you're taking include countless adverse reactions, right? I'm gonna name a few of them for you and it's gonna take me a minute, okay? This is a list that I've created for you. The side effects of these birth control drugs. Acne, breast changes, literally changes in the size of your breast, cervical erosion, jaundice, colitis, intolerance to contact lenses, dizziness, abdominal pain and bloating, reduced lactation, changes in menstrual flow, mood changes, depression, nausea, nervousness, pancreatitis, allergic rashes, loss of scalp hair, unscheduled bleeding, varicose veins, vomiting, cataracts, cysts, loss of vision, PMS, impaired kidney function, uncontrollable changes in weight, and best for last, infertility after discontinuation. That list took a long time to read, right? Now I want you to consider something. I left out the list of symptoms that I pulled for birth control. All those things that I just listed to you, I left out 40% of the symptoms. I left out 40% of that list. And it took me that long to get through those symptoms. This is insane, guys. This is absolutely insane. And I wanna repeat that last one one last time because again, we have 100 million people on the planet are on these birth control pills. And the last symptom that I read to you, the last adverse reaction, is infertility after discontinuation. Infertility after discontinuation, meaning you get off the birth control and you cannot have babies, and this can be irreversible. Literally irreversible. I guarantee they did not read that fine print to you when you went into your doctor's office telling them that you were having run-of-the-mill headaches and they whipped out a prescription pad and gave you a prescription for birth control and telling you to drink a fucking glass with sodium in it. Crazy, guys. This is what I'm trying to undo. This is what I'm trying to undo when you get to me. It's crazy, right? Redmond sea salt in water? Sure, it tastes a little bad. Salt shots are nasty. Eh. Gets rid of your headache. Or prescription birth control pills because that's what they're prescribing these things for. Oh, you got a headache? Birth control pill. Oh, you spotted one month? Birth control pill. Oh, you're a lesbian, like my sister, and they prescribe her birth control? She said, yeah, I missed, my, I missed my period by like a few days, and they put me on birth control. She's been on birth control ever since. My little sister. I could kill that son of a bitch that did that to her. Literally. This is what we're dealing with, guys. It's insane. Insane, right? Craziness. So let's talk about getting rid of these estrogenics and what we're trying to undo here with Clovis, okay? Getting rid of estrogenics. The problem with estrogenics, like we talked about in feedlot cattle, is they're stored in body fat. This is also why the detox can suck so bad for some people. When you really start detoxing, when I first shift your body into fat burning mode, we get into fat adaptation, you start burning fat cells. There's a reason why people experience really negative side effects. Some people experience worse side effects than other. 
the fat cells are burned and the stored toxins can be released into the bloodstream. And if you're burning a lot of fat, especially people who try like a fast, like a strict water fast, you can get these toxins just push, boom, right in your bloodstream, right? It's crazy. So this has even been shown, I had this in my notes and I said it to you guys earlier, this has been shown of THC. THC can get stored in your fat cells, you can burn it and get a little bit like, oh man, I feel a little, I feel like I got a contact high or something, why do I feel weird? You're literally releasing THC that's stored in your fat cells. THC is a fat soluble compound, right? Now, an average fat cell can easily live to be one year or older, right? You can have fat cells floating around your body that are one year. Not only that, they have clinical data that has shown fat cells that are 10 years old. Granted, that said, a guy like me, I'm not gonna have 10 year old fat cells, right? Because of protein turnover, because of fat cell turnover, because of all these things. My, I'm metabolically flexible, I'm constantly burning glucose or burning fat, depending on energy demand and what's available to me. Someone who's metabolically broken, maybe they're insulin resistant, type two diabetic or whatever, they could easily have fat cells floating around in their system that are 10 years old. And yes, those 10 year old fat cells could theoretically hold toxins from 10 years prior. So again, if you come to me and you've been on something like birth control or all these hormonal balance, uh, these hormonal balancing drugs or all these things, or whatever, and you or you've been significantly overweight for decades, you're like, hey, I've had this extra hundred pounds on me for 15 years, right? It can take many, many months to undo this stuff. It can take many months, and it can be very frustrating for some of you because you see other people's results. Like, oh, that girl. Like, I might have somebody who she was 28 years old and she was 120 pounds. Now she's 31 and she's 200 pounds, and I can cut 50 pounds off her, boom, real quick. It's like, whoa, wait a second, what the hell? I've been on this protocol way longer than that girl, but maybe you've been obese for 25 years, and now we're trying to undo all this stuff. It comes at different times for everybody due to the severity of each individual scenario. This happens a lot with men. I can get crazy results in men because I'll get like an ex-college athlete who was like, I was a football player and I trained six hours a day and I ate whatever I wanted. Now here I am eight years later, I don't play any football and I'm 350 pounds and I can cut 100 pounds off that dude like it's nothing because he gained that weight really, really quick. He wasn't always obese. He wasn't always storing this. The hormonal imbalance hasn't been that, around that long. These things are irreversible. And in men, it's a lot easier because most of the time when a man comes to me, he's never done any kind of hormone replacement therapy. Where women are getting birth control and thyroid uh, medication like it's candy. Like they're feeding this stuff to women like it's Skittles, right? That's a big issue, big, biz big issue. So it's really, really hard for me to untangle this stuff. So if you have hormonal imbalances, I can't say this enough, I am not a doctor. If you have hormonal imbalances, I highly, highly suggest that you find a very, very good functional medicine practitioner. Work with them, it's gonna be expensive. Your insurance is not gonna cover it. It's gonna cost thousands of dollars to do the extensive blood work that you're gonna need to do. You're gonna have to find a plan to get off your birth control, find a plan for fertility if you're trying to have babies. Chris Kresser is notoriously good at getting people pregnant. I know that sounds crazy, but there are women that are like, I've been trying to get pregnant for six years. They go see Chris Kresser, he's got a whole program for it. You know, three months later, they're pregnant with their first kid. These fertility issues can be reversed, but you need a plan to do it, and you need a really, really good practitioner. So um, let's talk about what you can do, okay? What you can do, and I'm gonna walk you through the steps that the experts agree upon for this natural hormonal balance from functional medicine practitioners. I'm gonna give you the steps from functional medicine practitioners, okay? I'm gonna talk through that. What it is, is Clovis, literally. All the AMAs, all the things that we've talked about, all this lifestyle stuff, I'm gonna walk you through it exactly so you can see what I'm talking about. But I'm literally reading this stuff like, oh my God, this is literally just, it's just my protocol. That's it, it's my protocol, you know? I'm reading this stuff after the fact going, okay, awesome, cool, this is great, right? So do you remember all those times I said, please stop looking at this like another 30 day reset. Don't look at it like a 30 day reset. We need to look at this long term. We need to make the lifestyle design changes, right? Lifestyle design, set up the lifestyle that you want for yourself for these extended changes. Why do I do this? Because I'm giving you the best possible shot at reversing and untangling all this, ish, the horrific damage that has been done to you for decades and it's not your fault. I get it. It's not your fault. It's frustrating. That's why I get frustrated when you want to tell me about the one weird period you've had because you've been on Clovis for 35 days and you're like, wait a minute, you know? I get it. You're, you're confused because you're living in your normal. Your normal is maybe you don't have a period or your normal is you haven't had a period in 15 years, or your normal is you have three periods per month, or you, don't, you have no idea the crazy things I've seen. That's your new normal. And you get so used to the dysfunction that when normal comes along and we start shifting things, 
you naturally go, wait a minute, dude, like you, you haven't eaten these new foods and wait a second, like my period's all different and I feel weird and blah, 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 right? It's your, your body's trying to correct itself. It's trying to get back to where it wants to be. But the sad fact is it can take a tremendous amount of time. It really can take a tremendous amount of time. Or sometimes like there are people in the academy, I, I think she's talking about it right now so I don't think she would mind, but we could not get fat loss results. Couldn't get fat loss, couldn't get fat loss, couldn't get fat loss. I said, we gotta go extreme. Let's just freaking do like an eight day fast. Let's do like a water day fast. Uh, an eight day water fast, right? Or bone broth fast or whatever we decide to do. And all of a sudden, boom, 20 pounds and 17 inches down in eight days when nothing else worked, right? We need to access those fat stores. We need to give your body literally no other option than to access those fat stores and start burning them. And sometimes the only way to do that is through a strict fast, right? So if you've been on the fence about fasting or you have fat loss that you can't get rid of, certain body percentage that you can't lose, I really suggest you look into this, hit me up about it, we can run a plan for you, set, get you set up, we can talk about fasting, the dangers, the ins and outs, and all those things, right? Yeah, Cassie, okay, so Cassie's cool with talking about it. Literally, could not get results. And I promised her when we first met, I said, if you stick with me, I will crack this code. I'm telling you, we will figure this out. We will make it happen. We will get you fat loss. It's going to happen. And we talked about glyphosate. She has PCOS, right? We talked about what are the things that cause PCOS? How can you reverse it? Glyphosate, right, is a pesticide, an herbicide. It's sprayed, it's round up. It's sprayed on soy crops. It's sprayed on all the grains. It leaks into the water system. If you don't have a charcoal water filter, you need one. All these things, right? We're trying to undo these things. Maybe there were some estrogenics in her house. Maybe she changed some, got the approved products list. I don't know, right? But all these little things, you start to untangle it, but it can take a lot of time. And thank you, Cassie, for being so freaking patient with me. And I'm sure it was frustrating to see other people having results and all these things. But I'm telling you, if you give me time, we will untangle this thing. We will make it happen, period, okay? We will make it happen. I'm telling you, we can untangle this. Sometimes it is like you're in a freaking escape room and you're trying to solve this puzzle and you're like, what the hell could this be, right? It can get really, really frustrating, but it takes time. I need you all to remember that when you come to me and you have decades of damage to undo, I need a little bit of patience, okay? A little bit of patience. Now again, I live in the health influencer fitness and nutrition space where it's all about Instagram abs and 30 day resets and I lost 14 pounds on whole 30 and whatever, right? This instant gratification fucks with your brain. So all of a sudden you have an unrealistic expectation for goals or well, wait a minute, this fat loss plan didn't work. I did the 21 day reset and it didn't work and then you give it up and you move on to the next thing. You can't do that, you can't, right? You need to get out of this instant gratification mindset. You really, really need to. It's very, very important. So the other thing I wanna talk about, I don't want this episode to be all doom and gloom, right? You may have decades of abuse or horrific stuff under your belt from bad medical advice or pills and potions or whatever you've taken and caloric deprivation and starvation diets, right? I can help you. We can untangle this and I can help you, but I wanna to talk to you very specifically about could not be clearer about this. I'm gonna walk you through something that makes me so mad that I consider giving it all up just to beat the shit out of somebody, okay? That literally, I'm gonna to talk to you about this because we've talked about how soaps, food coloring, and sunscreens are directly linked to ADD and ADHD in children, right? And connections to autism as well, okay? So you have these kids that are being medicated, they're being punished for bad behavior in school, all these things, when you have estrogenics that are impacting them. Foods like sugar and grains, which there are a lot of you in the academy that I talk to that send emails to me personally that are like, yep, still feeding the kids whatever they want, just can't get them on board. They get super upset when I take their sugar away. <laughs> right? I'm losing respect for you as we speak. Sorry, I don't care. You should have thought about that when you had kids, literally. It's that important. I, I say that again. You should have thought about that shit before you had kids. So th this is what I'm saying with you guys. This is not a question. It's not a question for me, right? It's not, I, I, I talk this way to my brother. When I see my brother and his kids eating that way, I go, what are you do? why are you poisoning your kid, man? Why are you poisoning your kid? Why, why are you doing that, right? I love you, but you need to hear this right now. These estrogenics are impacting your kid. Let me talk to you about it, right? If you have a daughter who started her period when she was eight years old, we need to have a chat. Because I see this all of the time. How much does this happen? Let me tell you. Fun fact. Early puberty, okay? Early puberty is called something called early onset puberty disorder, right? These estrogenics, these estrogen mimicking compounds that are getting into children through their juice bottles and whatever else you're giving them, right? These estrogenics leak into our children's bodies. Now, early puberty 
is now so common, I'm gonna get real pissed. Early onset puberty is now so common that the medical mainstream is considering lowering the normal age range of puberty to adjust, to adapt to this early onset puberty problem. Do you think an eight year old girl is ready to start thinking about having kids? I want you to think about that for a second. This is what we're talking about with hormones, okay? Now, why would they do this? Why would experts lower the normal age range of puberty because they no longer have to answer to the concerned parents? The concerned parents come in and say, how come you don't have an answer for my child's early onset puberty disorder? And they get to look at you and go, what do you mean early onset puberty disorder? The new normal range for puberty is seven years old to 11 years old. Perfectly normal. Health epidemic, health crisis avoided. We've solved it, hooray, right? Insane people. This is insane, this is what we're dealing with. It makes me sick, it's disgusting, but this is literally how shit works now. You're talking about lowering the normal age range for puberty so that you have to stop telling parents that you have no answer for their early onset puberty when their kid's diet consists of Lunchables, whole wheat bread sprayed with herbicides like atrazine, right? Atrazine is a known estrogenic. So you're literally feeding them bread every day, healthy whole grains, Cheerios, whatever the hell. And then you got babies on soy formula. The first two years of their lives are drinking soy formula, blah, blah, blah. How is this happening? My kid had soy for their first two years and now she had her period when she's seven years old. I don't know what happened. Hey doc, can you help me? Nah, that's just the new age for puberty. No issue. I gotta get off this. I gotta stop talking about this. I'm gonna start screaming. It's crazy. All right, so uh, yeah, let's get off that topic. Oh, good Lord, this stuff is crazy, man. These things are hard to do. These AMAs are hard to do, I'm telling you. You guys have no idea. So I, don't, I don't even deal with this, right? I'm, I'm healthy as a horse right now, but this stuff makes me so sick, so sick to my stomach that you have to come to me to find this stuff out. That shouldn't be the case. You shouldn't need me for any of this. Your healthcare professional should have taken care of you from day one, right? It's sick, man. All right, actionable steps, okay? Again, these are from functional medicine doctors, not from me. I am literally reciting to you, I'm reciting to you functional medicine doctor's approach to hormone balance. So, a focus on nutrient density. Okay, step one, focus on nutrient density to avoid micronutrient deficiencies. Go watch my AMA, stop telling your kid to eat vegetables, which is all about micronutrient deficiency. Also, my approved foods list, I have hand selected the most nutrient dense foods on planet Earth. Number two, Avoid estrogenics. Go to Clovis.store and download the approved products list, which I've already created for you. Go watch my AMA called Everything in Your House is Killing You. Number three, manage stress. Go watch my AMA that's all about stress, literally, and the ways that I manage stress. I can get you a 15% discount on the Muse headband if you want to start meditation. I've talked about saunas. I've talked about meditation. I've talked about how to get better sleep at night, how to avoid screens, what the TV does to your brain. I've talked about all this meditation. I've talked about journaling in the morning and at night. I've talked about the Panda Planner, all these things. If you want to talk about these things again, get in touch with me. Email me, justin at cloviscultura.com. Want a deal on the Muse headband? I got you. Got a URL for you. We'll go save you some money, right? Manage stress. The cortisol and HPA access is critical for hormone imbalance. Listen to my stress episode. Number four, which I just mentioned on. Sleep. Getting enough sleep. Go watch my episode on sleep hacking. I have an entire AMA that's just devoted to sleep and how I hacked my own sleep to get 100% sleep quality according to the tracker. An aura ring. If you want to get yourself an aura ring, this is the best sleep tracker on the market, period. O-U-R-A, aura ring, sleep tracker. Start quantifying your sleep. Make sure you're getting good. Getting good sleep. Five. Exercise, but this is very important. Why? Because you do not want to overtrain. Overtrain causes hormonal imbalance. So sedentary equals hormone imbalance. Overtraining equals hormone imbalance. Not too much, not too little. Go watch every single AMA I have ever done on fitness where I tell you my belief system and the way I approach training and the way I deal with professional athletes and the way that I deal with people when they ask me to train them, right? 
It is all about efficiency, the perfect in-between sedentary and in-between overtraining. This is how you get healthy. Exercise is critically important, but it has to be handled perfectly, okay? Now, the last thing that I'm gonna say that I'm gonna add this in is really, work with me for sure. We can untangle this stuff. But if you're having significant problems, right, and you think that you may need some blood work or something like that, find a professional. Functionalmedicine.org, I believe is the website. It's either functionalmedicine.org or functionalmedicine.com. You can find a practitioner. Find yourself a good functional medicine practitioner. If you find one that doesn't work for you, get rid of them and get another one. Don't try until you get one, okay? I don't stop trying until you get one. It's very, very important. This is important for your entire family, okay? Clovis.store blog slash AMA, fantastic, yes. Get a functional medicine doctor, 100%. And, okay, book recommendation. Uh, this is a big word. Estro Generation. Uh, this guy's name is Anthony J. And he is awesome and he's hilarious. His writing style is hilarious. I literally felt like, like I wrote the book. He's just like a ball buster and has puns and has all this funny stuff in his book. It's great. He did a great uh, podcast with Rob Wolf, which was perfect timing. This estrogenetics thing, we decided to do a hormone. Uh, episode which is great so extra generation uh, and the subtitle is extra generation the uh, est yeah, extra generation how estrogenics are making you fat sick and infertile by Anthony J check that out all right what time is it boom 9 15 okay I thought I could do an hour and 15 minutes guys sometimes it's really stressful to just just spit all this stuff out right it's crazy 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 let's look at some comments see what you guys are dealing with here Uh, I got my notes up. Oops. I lost your tab, guys. All right, ifm.org. That's it. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, what is that? International Institute of Functional Medicine.org, I think. Clovis.store slash blog slash AMA. Awesome. Heard about Aura Ring. Yeah, Aura Ring's expensive, man. It's the best sleep tracker on the market. Um, sleep approved products by Justin Alt. Thank you so much, Krista, for sharing that. This is an AMA. Yes, it is an AMA. Hello, Anna. What's up, Dad? Hey, hey. Ask me anything, Papa Nault. What else we got? Sticking to Clovis protocol reversed the early onset in my nine-year-old daughter. Yes, amazing. That's incredible. Shannon, that's, ugh. You just made me cry talking about stuff like that. I think I died that happened to me at age seven. I was almost 14 and almost died then. Yes, exactly, but again, this is now, it's a long time ago for you. You know what I mean? These things are different and they're, they're only getting worse and worse. Like the obesity curve is directly in line with these estrogens. Like. People are doing all this BPA-free stuff, right? So you have BPA, you might have a plastic that's BPA-free, but you don't know that that BPA-free bottle contains something called BPS, which is every bit as harmful as BPA. It's the same thing as you might have something that's glyphosate-free, but it has atrazine, another herbicide that's just as harmful as glyphosate. This stuff is nearly impossible to avoid. It's really, really crazy. I can confirm the early puberty problem. My oldest got hers at nine. Shit, man. Eight years later, I had my second daughter switch to organic and grass-fed pasture raised, and my second daughter got hers as 12. There you go. This stuff is insane, guys. It's absolutely insane. Concealing through redefining. Redefining. Recommend watching from the beginning, though. Justin, get mad. Hell no. Clovis Culture on Insta. Yeah, awesome. I have two little ones. Okay, uh, it's not showing me any more comments, guys. If you guys have new comments, let me know. Where do you get your water from? What do you drink? Okay, um, so again... Uh, guys, I, <laughs> I have been a musician my whole life, right? And I'm, a, I'm comfortable, I've been comfortable, you know? I probably spend way too much on biohacking and things like this, but um, I have a whole house filtration system. Uh, so literally it's a Rainsoft whole house filtration system. Um, on top of that, I have a Gen Air refrigerator. So I have the whole house filtration system and then that goes into my Gen Air refrigerator which has another filter inside of it. So my drinking water is actually double filtered. Um, so that's how I deal with it. Um, if I'm out and about, my favorite water is Mountain Valley Spring Water. If you can get Mountain Valley Spring Water, it's fantastic. You can actually get it delivered to your house. Now, I don't know how much money it is. It's probably expensive. Um, I wonder if I can find that. But Mountain Valley Spring Water is fantastic. And they have sparkling water, which is delicious. Um, I'm not gonna try to Google it right now, but if you just go to Mountain Valley Spring Water, you can actually get it delivered to your house, which is awesome. I don't have a code for Aura Ring, nope. Um, my 11 year old had cramps and all I was thinking was she would get her period sooner than 
Uh, but she has changed her diet. She's 12, no period yet. Good, awesome, okay. Ask for Aura Ring for Christmas, yeah. Uh, by then too, I'm sure the Aura Ring will be more readily available because they took a ton of pre-orders. Like literally, I said, I ordered this. I paid for mine in April and I got it now, which is kind of crazy. Um, that's where I get my drinking water. Mike sent you a message. Do you think poor hormones and parents reflect on grown children? Okay, no, uh, they don't filter out. So there's, that, there's something, I'll see if I can write this up here. This is a very scary word, transgenerational. And I want you guys to understand what that means. It means that they've actually done studies on this, like whether or not you need braces, like how your teeth are aligned in your head, have a tremendous amount to do with whether or not your grandmother ate grains as a staple in her diet. It's insane. Like the Weston A. Price Foundation has done a lot of this on like dental uh, in indigenous tribes and in indigenous cultures that have never been, had access to a Western diet. And then they track them over generations as we introduce the Western diet and the way their teeth change and everything. So some of these things are actually transgenerational. And this is through something called epigenetics. So, um, God, this is a deep dive, guys. But you have your genetics, you have your DNA, and then you have epigenetics, which literally means on top of. So the epigenetics are like these codings that go on top of your code. If you think about it like binary code, then you slip in these little extra pieces of information. The epigenetics can literally, it's as close as you can get to changing your DNA, but epigenetics can change your DNA for the good and the bad. They can turn certain, th certain things on and certain things are off. Like there's a certain uh, um, gene called PPARY. I believe it's off the top of my head, PPARY. This is literally called a fat switch. Um, estrogenetics, uh, estrogenics can turn on PPARY, and if it turns it on, you will literally just gain fat like crazy. And you can actually pass these things on to your children, and your children can pass them on to your grandchildren. This is literally transgenerational, so we actually don't know the full impact of estrogenetics. We have no idea. Now they have done animal studies like in pigs and mice and all these things and within two to three generations because their lifespans are so short, you can test them. Within two to three generations, complete infertility. You can be popping out 100% sterile mice via estrogenics in literally two to three generations. Um, it's unbelievable. Yeah, this is called transgenerational. I'm a total uh, DNA and genetics and epigenetics nerd. So this is like kind of my wheelhouse. I've been researching this stuff like crazy. I don't really get deep into it because it's super tricky and complicated, but um, yeah, transgenerational problems. It's literally like you code your DNA. It's, it's unbelievable. Like there's a reason why, you know, children are, almost all children universally are afraid of the dark. Why? Because once upon a time, we literally slept in caves and we had to be afraid of predators. This is a real thing. These things can get coded. So you don't know why. It's like, well, this three-year-old has never seen a scary movie. How come he's terrified of the dark? Why does this happen? And why is this universal across the board for little kids? These are genetic memories. It's genetic coding. It's really crazy. Um, I have not read the book Gene. No. Whole food carries Mountain Valley. Yeah, a ton of places carry Mountain Valley. You can get really lucky. I've got Mountain, Mountain Valley at like a food lion. Like I was in uh, Fairfield Glade. I think it was a food lion. I was like, what? And got a big case of Mountain Valley. It was awesome. Yeah, so do you think poor hormones are fucking children? Yup, what else we got here? The Gene, an intimate history book by Siddhartha Mukherjee. You probably said that wrong, but I gotta check that one out. That sounds awesome. Um, what else are we looking at, guys? What else you wanna talk about? Hmm. What else we got? Anything? Uh, Jenny, I know you wanted to talk about uh, PCOS. PCOS is... is it's really complicated it, because here's where I get upset about it is you have uh, polycystic ovarian system, so the polycystic ovarian syndrome, right? So it's an enlargement of the ovaries, literally, or cysts or all these things that are happening, which again, we said can be caused by birth control. But where they really get me is this whole thing of medical diagnosis and cannot be reversed, right? Mm, I don't know. I'm not so sure. Um, I think it, it, it's involved in a lot of things. I think insulin resistance plays a role. I think inflammation plays a role. I think that hormone imbalance plays a role, especially micronutrient deficiency. Like we talked about, elevated testosterone levels can lead directly to PCOS. Um, so is it completely irreversible? I'm not a doctor. Not a doctor, guys. But if you have it, I would do a lot more research, a lot more research, and I would talk to the right people. I would get yourself a good functional medicine doctor and I would really think about it. And one of the best things that I've found um, for PCOS 
and the work of Dr. Jason Fung is fasting, strict fasting, like water fasting. Um, tremendous, tremendous, tremendous impact on PCOS. So you definitely want to look into that 100%, okay? What are the biggest differences in using this protocol and then with those who want to lose a lot of weight? Well, what do you mean? Um, Clovis is 100% customized. That's the difference between me and all protocols is you could go to Whole30 or Primal Blueprint or whatever and they're gonna say, eat less than 100 grams of carbs. That tells you nothing about yourself. Nothing about yourself, nothing about your own physiology, your own bio biology. I take your numbers, where you're at, your activity levels, what your goals are, all these things, and I create a custom plan for you. It's different for each and every single person. So it's not the same as any of these other protocols. It's just not. Like keto, generally, for men, eat less than 20 grams of carbs a day and 80, 70 to 80% of your calories from fat, right? It doesn't tell you anything, right? So I do custom plans. That's the difference. Go watch the episode number 29, Clovis is not keto. Um, every person is different, loses weight at different weights. Uh, is that all green veggies? No, some of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. Well, one per gram, the most nutrient dense foods on the planet are herbs and spices. Uh, believe it or not, herbs are like nature's pharmaceutical drugs. Check out Ayurvedic medicine if you wanna get into that. Um, herbs are incredible. Then you have meat products, like fatty acids and like pasture, pasture raised grass fed meat, like wildly nutrient dense. The most nutrient dense foods on earth are liver from animals, like beef liver, chicken livers, crazy nutrient dense. Um, unbelievably nutrient dense. And then, yeah, then you have leafy green vegetables and all those things. And people make the argument for fruit. I've been over that a million times. The fructose and micronutrient trade-off is just simply, you know, fructose plays a huge role in insulin resistance. I just can't, I can't recommend it in people who are trying to lose weight whatsoever and not kids either, right? Thanks for this episode. You're going to have to watch it to take it all in. Yep. Your brain is so big. <laughs> Me or all brains? I think all brains are pretty big. <laughs> They're responsible for a lot of caloric, uh, a lot of calories. If they don't customize it for you, it won't be right for you. Yes, 100%, 100%, absolutely, right? And it's really tricky too because I'm, I'm throwing myself out here for you guys. I mean, it's like in, in the state of Tennessee, like I cannot give you nutrition advice for any medical reason. I literally, like I, that, that's illegal and I don't do that. I tell you guys all the time, I am a doctor. This is not medical advice. This is me picking out what I have learned and sharing it with you guys so you can avoid some of the pitfalls that I've fallen into. Like I've been down the rabbit hole with everything, man. Like I've tried every supplement you can think of. I have done jujitsu, boxing, CrossFit, powerlifting, beach body, insanity, P90X, running, whatever the hell. I have tried strict ketogenic. I have done ridiculous amounts of, mic I've done micronutrient glutathione injections, IV therapy. I've hooked up neurons to, neur these things to my neurons and my brain, Neurooptimal for $110 a session. I've trained with personal trainers for $250 an hour to learn how to do things like kettlebells and barbell training. I have a $4,000 infrared sauna sitting in my garage. I have a full CrossFit powerlifting gym. This is what I'm saying to you guys. I'm not sitting here like, hey, 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 hey. I'm just telling you, I have literally run I've done everything. I've done everything, guys, right? And this is why I, I get it all the time and I appreciate it. Thank you so much when you guys say this. You're just like, dude, how do we ask you a question and you just freaking know the answer? Like, why do you know all this shit? I'm like, man, because I was frustrated. I got tired of people not being able to tell me shit. So I went out and I learned it. That's what it is and it's freaking frustrating to me, man. I was talking to one of my best buddies back home about how to feed his baby because his fucking asshole allergist didn't know that A1 and A2 dairy had different proteins. Literally. Now, thank God he got rid of that allergist. Then he was like, uh, I've never heard of A2 dairy. This is an allergist for a baby, for an infant. He said, what about A2 milk? He said, what's A2 milk? I I've never heard of that. Or she, I don't know who it was. What's, what's A2 milk? I've never heard of that. Well, it's a different kind of milk. Well, no, all milk is the same. All the proteins are the same. It won't make a difference. What? You should have your license taken away. Man, have your license taken away. What are you, I need to rear naked choke you until you are asleep on the ground. That's what I need to do. Right? Like it, it's, I don't even know what to do guys. This is just crazy. Like, I don't want to be this guy. I, I honestly, this is a lot of fucking work. I'm not kidding. <laughs> but I understand that I have a lot of stuff up here, a lot of stuff up here and a lot of stuff that I can get out here to you. And for some reason I can come up with little iPhone gadgets and say, Hey, look, this is how hormone receptors work. I don't know why I'm able to grab this stuff and bring it down into a situation where you can fully understand it in a way that a doctor has probably never done for you. But I'll keep being that guy as long as I need to. I 100% will. And I think things are changing. There are some insurance companies coming around that are trying to cover functional medicine and all these things are changing, but it's like trying to turn a cruise ship 360 degrees. That's how slow this stuff goes. Like, uh, like I said, your primary care physician is 17 years on average behind the current clinical research. It's insane. It's crazy, guys. So anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna start 
blah, 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 going nuts here. All right, new t-shirt. This is not medical advice. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah, and I've actually put, uh, there's a disclaimer in all the blog posts now. You gotta be careful about this stuff, man, because I'm sitting here changing people's lives for the better, literally. The medical community has never got them the results they want. I changed their life and I'm at risk of like jail time. What? What, like, what is happening here? What, this is, this is disgusting. It's disgusting. Well, and plus it's sick care. Yeah, 100%. That's exactly what it is. Sick care. Arm bar. Yes! Let's do it. All right, uh, what time is it? 9.30. Yeah. You guys got any other questions? Uh, herb medicine. Oh, God. Herb medicine is literally a, its own episode. Uh, go back and watch my AMA called um, Stop Telling Your Kid to Eat Vegetables. I talk a little bit about herbs. Um, I look up... Here, hold on. I can remove this now. For herbs, look no further than Ayurvedic. Look up Ayurvedic herbs and spices. Amazing, amazing. I make my own blend. There's a little place here called Urban Market that we go to and make our own little spice blends, mix them all up. Put it, I put it like on all my foods. Like I have herbs and spices all over my food. Some people, it's probably too much flavor for them, but I absolutely love it. I put it on everything, fantastic. So Ayurvedic medicine. Um, there's a great book actually called The Paleo-Vedic Diet. Guys, by the way, let me just show you this. This Clovis.store that we talk about, right? Because there's a lot of new faces in here. Clovis.store, if you sign up for a custom nutrition plan, like you get all the macros and everything we talk about, I'm gonna build you out a custom nutrition plan, but you also get access to IamClovis.com. And I don't know if you guys know this, but on IamClovis.com, you get a list of my favorite podcasts, my favorite books, my favorite resources, instructional videos of me doing little mini workout stuff. You get a list of my favorite workout protocols. All this stuff that you guys are asking me is all here ready and waiting for you. The Paleo Vedic Diet uh, book is listed there on my list of books. Um, and when I find out about new things like Estro Generation, Estro Generation is going to get added to that list of books and that's constantly gonna get updated. Like it's just, if you're on these AMAs, it literally doesn't make sense for you to not have a custom plan. It absolutely doesn't. Like literally makes zero sense. That's just me being blunt with you guys. Like if you really wanna change, stop fucking around. Let's do it. That's it, that simple. If you don't wanna change, keep watching AMAs for free and start trying to piece it together yourself. I got 60 plus hours of free stuff for you. So you can go look around and try to piece it together and try to make your own plan. Go find some BMR calculator online that's not gonna get your numbers right and completely jack it up. You can do that, or you can go find another influencer or somebody else, do whatever you want. But if you're here and you wanna keep consuming this stuff, there's no reason for you to not just work with me directly. Like you literally talk to me directly. You don't talk to my team, you don't talk to my minions who do this for me, it's just me. Clovis is me, guys. So I'll run it for you. We can work together 100%, one-on-one. -on -one. It's awesome. When are you gonna make Clovis blue lockers? Working on it, shh, don't tell anybody. What else we got? Custom nutrition plan, boom, there you go. Krista, that's awesome, thank you. All right, if you guys don't have questions, we'll wrap it up. This is episode number 31, AMA number 31, hormones, finding the balance. This is real tricky stuff, guys. Um, I don't know if that was what you expected. Um, another thing that's happened with me is, um, when I ask you guys for feedback on AMAs, I need you guys to understand that like, saying like, hey, hormones, that's so big, that's so big. So I, I had to sit down by myself and figure out like, what's gonna get my juices flowing? What's gonna get my wheels spinning? What do I wanna talk about, right? So the less feedback I have from you, I'm just gonna start spinning this into my own stuff that I think is important for you to understand that is important for, for me to talk about. So it's either you guys direct me like fully and say, hey, I wanna talk about specifically X for Y result. That's what I wanna talk about. And I'll go, okay, cool, awesome. Um, but if that doesn't happen, if I don't get that input, then I'm just gonna do something like this. I'm like, okay, what do I think the most important aspects of hormones are? Well, avoiding all the things that completely destroy your hormones first and foremost, right? I don't care about your HRT replacement. I care about avoiding the problem to begin with, right? So that's how I spin episodes out like this. And it takes, it's a lot of work, guys, a lot of work. I worked on this for hours today, you know? Absolutely. Uh, is it in my brain? Yes. Do I have to deliver it in a clear and concise way so that you guys can learn it? Like, I want you guys to learn this stuff at the speed of sound compared to how long it took me to do the research and learn it for myself. See what I'm saying? I'm just trying to accelerate your learning so I can make a bunch of little teachers to go out and teach other people and teach your kids, for God's sake. If you have an I Am Clovis plan and you don't have Clovis kids, <sighs> we gotta talk about our friendship because your priorities are jacked. Jacked, okay? Just being honest with you. Just being honest, guys. So, that was Mad Info. I'm in New Jersey. What's up, man? I grew up in Rhode Island. Awesome. 
where do you do all this work? I am, well, I do, the custom nutrition plans are all throughout the globe, literally. I work with people in Canada, I work with people in the United States, I work with people in Europe, literally. I do custom nutrition plans for everyone all over. I can't shop, I can't ship perfect paleo powder outside of the US, but custom nutrition plans, I work with everybody. So wherever, I live in Tennessee, but that doesn't matter. Um, all right. What side question from Sam? Wait, side question from Sam. What's Sam's side question? Did I miss that? I don't see a side question, Krista. What you talking about? Minions. <laughs> That's what I need. I need an army of minions. I do have a couple minions. You know who you are. Thank you very much. All right, guys, we're gonna shut this one down. AMA number 31. Uh, this is called Hormones, Finding the Balance. And uh, yeah, I thought about calling it Hormones. Um, what was I gonna call it? I can't remember. Oh, uh, Hormones from Fat Loss to Fertility. But I didn't know if that was too out there. Uh, my tattoo? This is, the, the ship is the centerpiece of the family crest from my dad's Nault side family crest. This is a take on the centerpiece, which is a ship. This is the ocean. This is a play on the Rhode Island state flag, which I grew up in Rhode Island, which is just a yellow anchor with stars around it. And this banner says sinners like me. So basically family, friends, Rhode Island, where I'm from, all sinners like me. There you go. That's my tattoo. And then I have Billy Joel, sheet music. And so it goes. Tattoos, guys, weird. This is getting weird. Let's get out of here before you guys start asking me more personal shit, okay? Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for this. AMA, Ask Me Anything, number 31, Hormones, Finding the Balance. Thank you guys for appreciating this work. Thank you guys for allowing me to do this. Thank you guys for listening and taking this stuff to heart. Thank you, Krista, for being amazing on Instagram and like really introducing people to Clovis in a serious way. I wish that I could get absolutely everybody to be that evangelical about it so we can really start to change the world in a very serious way. Sam, thank you so much for your Instagram. Love it, it's awesome. You guys are just, you're walking the walk, man. You are not just talking the talk, you are walking the walk. It's awesome, I appreciate it so, so much. Um, I wanna get as much of what's in my brain into your brains so you can go do this in the future as well. That's how we make real change happen. It's at some point, it can't just be me. It can't be. You know, there's too many people out there. Too many people out there need help. Um, there's still 18 of you guys watching. That's crazy. Thank you guys for hanging out this long. Ask me anything. Number 31, hormones, finding the balance. My name is Justin Nault. Go to Clovis.store. Get access to IamClovis.com. Get the approved products ebook at the very least and clean up your house. Get all the estrogenics out of your house. Go check out Estrogeneration by Dr. Anthony J. I think he's a doctor. Check out the Rob Wolf podcast with him. Thank you guys. You're awesome. I appreciate it. Any questions, Justin at ClovisCulture.com or Clovis.store. Just there's a bunch of different ways on there. Click the message button, Facebook message, whatever you need to do to get in touch with me. And I will answer you directly because that's how I roll. Just a note, AMA 31.